Hey guys, welcome back to the Empower Podcast. So we have a pretty cool episode for you guys today. Um, In this episode, I bring on my friend Kane Shepard, who is currently a technical artist at uh, Sony Interactive in San Diego. And um, yeah, it's it's really cool. He goes into what it takes to get into the industry and also goes into a little bit more of like what a technical artist is and how he was able to get into the industry directly out of college. Uh, Enjoy. All right, guys, welcome back to the Empower Up podcast. Can't remember what episode we're on, but uh, <laughs> I think that's a good thing. We've been doing this for a couple months now. I've been wanting to bring on my friend Kane for quite some time. Uh, Kane and I, we go back uh, quite a ways. We went to college together. And uh, Kane, yeah, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, yeah. Um, uh, I currently work at PlayStation as a technical artist. Um, yeah, I went to San Diego State with Byron. We both were in the game development club together. And yeah. And I, I know Kane as well um, from doing talks at the game development club at San Diego State University. And first of all, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy day to join us uh, and to share your experience. Um, like, I know that you have recently gotten hired on to work in AAA video games, and the journey for you is very fresh. And I know you have very, like, in the experience, you have recently transitioned from, you know, graduating college into now working in AAA gaming. And I know there are a lot of people out there that are kind of following in your footsteps. They're like, they're in college right now, they want to get into games, but they may not know exactly like what are some ways to to actually get the job because part of it is like when you go through school they'll teach you the skills that you need to do a job whether it's like being an artist or a programmer or a designer but i found that there's an an entirely different like art or science to getting getting the job you know what i mean and some of those things they may not teach you in school in your formal education so for you in particular, I know you have a unique journey and would you mind sharing with us and, and the, the listeners, like what are the things that you did that helped make you um, successful in your transition to, you know, from student to actually getting a job? Yeah, so, yeah, obviously I learned some like important stuff in college, but I think uh, like the biggest, most important stuff was the stuff that I did like on my own time. And that includes like the game development club. And I spend like lots of time online just learning new skills and stuff that's more related to game development. I have a computer science background, which is uh, great to learn programming, but there's still a lot of stuff that's specific to games that you're just not going to learn about in a traditional college, at least. Uh, um, can you can you go more into detail on your like background? Because I remember when we first got into the club, I didn't realize you were a freshman because you seem so advanced going in, right? Like, <laughs> Did you have a CS like uh, like classes in high school? Was there like AP computer science or like did, you must have started in high school, right? Uh, I mean, I didn't learn any of that kind of stuff in high school, but yeah, I did always have a passion for making games. Uh, I started like making games with like Yo-Yo Game Maker. It was just click yeah. and drag stuff. But I started to learn Unity on my own time because there's just so many great resources online. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, yeah, that kind of gave me a head start. And I knew a bit about programming before going to university. And that also helped me kind of get into the game dev club without being too lost. Oh, okay. That's pretty yeah. cool. And can you kind of go into, I know you're an artist, right? So you got your mind oh, yeah. in, in art. Um, I yeah, know originally how... I was going to major <laughs> just in art, but uh, I decided to minor instead. Originally I wanted to double major, um, but... <laughs> I remember art, you talking uh, about art this was, a lot. Uh, <laughs> art, they kind of force you to study certain things that I just don't care much about. Um, and, uh, you know, same with computer science. There's just a lot you can learn online now and on your own. Uh, so I prefer to just do that all on my own time instead of uh, taking, like, these specific classes that I have to take. But, like, going in, you didn't really have an idea of, like, technical artists, right? That just kind of happened to be a good fit for you? Yeah, I didn't know about tech art until relatively recently. Uh, you know, all like the obvious game, all the people that like want to get into game development usually think about like they want to be a designer or a gameplay programmer. 
Um, of course, those are probably the harder ones to get into because they're like the first ones that come to your mind yeah. when you think about game development. Um, I think learning about tech art has actually is what helped me get into the industry because it's a bit more niche and the skills you need are also like a bit more specific. So, yeah. And can you go into and, that? Oh, yeah. Sorry, Steve. Um, can you go? Can I was going to ask the same exact question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like... Steve and I, I think we understand kind of what a tech artist does, but can you kind of explain like maybe as best you can what you do every day and how you would best describe like what a technical artist is in the industry? Yeah, in the industry, tech art is like a super broad term. Um, they basically just bridge the gap between like the artists and the programmers. Um, personally, what I've been doing, I've only had this job for three, four months but I've done things like uh, tool development. So I've made some tools to help out animators and environment artists. Um, I've also done some more kind of like IT kind of stuff, like helping you with user setups. Mm. Um, I've also started working with shaders though, which I'm a fan of. Mm. Um, they basically tell the game how to display the game basically, um, which is a pretty cool uh, subject i think so how how did you find out about tech art you mentioned wanting to you originally going into college wanting to study art and then you kind of tossed around major minor double major things like that at what point did you learn tech art existed and then what was it that made you want to follow that path professionally yeah um So I knew I wanted to get into the game dev industry, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, I, so I wanted to major in both computer science and art. So uh, I couldn't decide if I want to do like a 3D modeling kind of uh, job or a programming job. Um, and I've spent like a couple years in college just struggling to decide which direction I want to go with. I know I wanted to get into the game dev industry either way, but I was struggling with that. So I was just uh, doing lots of research on game jobs and stuff. And I learned about tech art and I thought that was perfect for me because it kind of uh, was in between the two of my interests in game dev. Mm -hmm. It probably helped a lot too. Like since we worked together a lot in the club, we, um, for those of you guys who don't know, we were part of the game development group at a San Diego state called Asset Game Lab and Kane was the president of the club. We both helped run it. Um, and we both kind of got to wear a lot of different hats and kind of see what we liked and what we didn't like. I'm sure that was probably a big help, right? Because you, I know he yeah. personally did a lot of different things to help out the, mm -hmm. the projects as well. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like to just do, I mean, I like everything game dev related. So yeah, even like, I'm not a good sound designer, but I like playing with sound design <laughs> and music and other stuff too. So uh, that's not what you tell me, man. He tells yeah. me he can take my job any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> you, Steve, you have no idea how many times he talks to me. About <laughs> <laughs> He's always talking about, oh man, I'll take your music degree. <laughs> I absolutely love that. And one of the things that impresses me most about both of you in particular is that you guys went to San Diego State and they, in my understanding, they do not have like a formal game development degree, right? Right. And you still found a way to take the passions and take the things that you are learning about and find a way into the industry. And I think a big part of that was you being self-motivated to say, I want to make video games and you guys actually ran that club. And for those people listening, um, that's one of those things that can help really separate you from other candidates when applying for a job is showing like with, with action, how passionate you are. So for Byron and for Kane, 
they they were in this club like they ran this club where they helped organize other game developers and they just did their best to build games like nobody forced them to do that or there wasn't just like teachers that were guiding them and telling you take this course and do these things no they knew what they wanted to do and they found and created ways to make games and i think that's a very important lesson so Thank you guys for, for sharing that story. Um, and then Kane, another one of those things that uh, I know that we've talk, talked about um, just regarding getting a job is the power of networking, right? Um, just getting out and learning, like meeting other people. Um, and would you mind sharing like what's your, what's your experience with networking and how did that help you get, uh, get your job? Yeah, I'd say I didn't like know a single person that was interested in game dev until I came to college um, and joined the game dev club. Um, and it has been like a huge help for me to, I, I don't think I would be in the industry if it wasn't for like the friends I made uh, from joining clubs and stuff. And joining the club is actually, although that's kind of like its own networking, that's how I learned about um, organizations like IGDA uh, International Game Developers Association, where they used to have meetups um, in person where you could meet other game developers, which was really cool. Um, I think uh, the, the biggest uh, help for me in terms of networking was Barry Evans, <laughs> my friend uh, from the club. He's also kind of uh, interested in the similar stuff that I am with like graphics programming and kind of technical and art kind of mixed together. And he really helped me out a lot about, uh, he helped me learn like what a tech artist does and like what kind of things are important to learn to get into the industry. So um, yeah, networking is not about just finding about finding someone who could hire you, but also just learning more about the industry from a more uh, insider view um, helps a lot too definitely and then also i think another huge thing is that you had known barry for years right through game development at san diego state and through those experiences i'm sure there are a lot of days where you were just working side by side and he was able to see your work ethic. He was able to see the talent that you had. And it wasn't just like a bullet point on a resume. No, he knows you in person. Mm -hmm. So for him to be able to give you insights and also give a recommendation um, to, to work at a place, like he's putting his reputation on the line, right? And I'm sure he would, the only reason why he recommended you is because he knows you, likes you, and trusts you, right? Um, and that's one of those things that a lot of uh, students in particular, I feel, don't understand yet is the power of having, you know, people that you trust. Because Barry knows that if he invites somebody into the workplace, that he's going to be spending 40 plus hours <laughs> per week with this person, right? So is he going to put himself in a position to work with somebody he likes or somebody that he dislikes or maybe someone who he has no idea what their personality is like you know what i mean um so i, I just love that story that helps illustrate the importance of um just making friends and being a cool person in general because you like you never knew that barry was going to get a job at some place right and that he would somehow um have a a significant part in helping you get a job but that was just one of those things that was organically built and out of all of the people that barry's met why was he recommending you so i mean hopefully you can kind of reverse engineer and think about how like how powerful that can be and then also help illustrate to other people like hey relationship building right now in class in school right that's huge because in, in school, part of it is you go through all of these different group projects, right? And in those projects, you remember who pulls their weight and who doesn't, right? Mm -hmm. So every single opportunity that you have to work with somebody is you interviewing without you even knowing it. So yeah. thank, you for the, thank you for that example. Yeah, that's a great point about making friends because uh, 
originally when I was like just focusing on networking, I would go to like these meetings and I would kind of just talk to people and get to know them, um, which might help out. But like you said, like building friendships will lead to like building trust and stuff. And uh, that's a, a lot more powerful than just knowing a lot of people in the industry. Uh, and I think the reason I became pretty close with Barry is because uh, honestly, I, I think I'm pretty introverted, so I have a hard time approaching people. But I remember Barry was just on his laptop working on like some just something in Unity, and it just looked cool. He had like really fancy graphics on Unity. I didn't that I've never seen on Unity. So I was I just wanted to know why his thing looked so cool. And it turned out he was like writing his own renderer. To, so like instead of having Unity display things for you, he was like overriding that. And his own code was generating all of the graphics in the game. And I thought that was like super cool. And I wanted to learn more about that. And uh, just seeing Barry work on that stuff and asking him questions, I kind of got closer to him and not, got to know him and realized we shared a lot of interests. And I think that's kind of how we started becoming friends. Yeah, I want to share a story as well with you guys. Like um, a few years ago, Kane and I did a game jam with Barry. <laughs> and that, that game jam was what really put made me realize like oh shit kane kane's a beast because he can you know what i'm talking about <laughs> you know exactly wait, what i'm talking about wait, we've done so many game jams together which one <laughs> it was one we did a game jam with uh san diego i can't remember if it was global or if it was a local one but we were like what 30 minutes to the, to the deadline and then we were like oh fuck fuck oh, it's not yeah. working. we don't know what to do we don't know what to do and then me and barry were just freaking out the our other teammate and then kane just in the background just typing like this he's like fixed it <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. You guys were like so talking funny. about the bug as I fixed it. We were all freaking out. And he's just like, "Yeah, take take care of it, guys." <laughs> That's awesome. And I'm curious, do you still have that game somewhere somehow? Yeah. Um, and like, what what was the game? I think that was Babushka's Bullet, right? Yeah. Did I upload that, or did you upload that? Uh, I have that on my own HIO. Think, yeah yeah we definitely we definitely have that game saved it was like a highlight uh yeah if you can pull it up kane you can, can you share a screen that, that was uh i was pretty proud of that that game Let's see babushka's bullet right yeah i think and it was uh like the theme was like uh what does home mean to you if i remember yeah. correctly yeah so go like go deeper into that story, right? Like, what were the things that were going on in your head, and what was it that that Kane did that helped you really like open your eyes to him being an awesome like just employee person in general? You know what I mean? Like, what what are what's the specific things that he did? Yeah, well, to be honest, it was like a well oiled, -oiled machine. I feel like the amount of work that we we put out by the end of the two days was equivalent to like a month's work because whenever like Kane said he was oh I'm gonna get this done he got it done when Barry whenever Barry said I'm gonna get this done it got done so it was one of those things where we kind of knew our abilities pretty well and whenever we scoped something out we were actually able to accurately develop it in in that in that time frame and I think that like really went a long way with this game jam that's awesome. Um, and another thing that I'm sure that the listeners have, have caught on to is that there's a lot of laughter when you two work together, right? <laughs> like, and now that you're both in the professional work environment, you see how laughter in people's personalities can can really play into the work environment in general and just the, the enjoyability of going to a workplace. So, like... Tell me about how how you've experienced personalities in the workplace where you are now, right? Yeah, I don't I don't get to go places yet <laughs> since I'm working in the office or working from home. Um, mm -hmm. So we're mostly just communicating on Slack and uh, video calls. Uh, but that does make me think our Slack channel has like hundreds of emojis that just anybody just uploads, <laughs> and it's really fun to like just look at uh, all the ways that people are reacting to just general posts and discussions. And uh, I feel like I like that Sony has this kind of uh, chillness. 
where they're not like super formal about everything. I, I like that people are uh, just feel free to be themselves and have fun while working. Well, I hear that Kane, you're also, well, I know for a fact that you're into memes, right? So I heard that day one, you started, you started posting all those memes in your Slack. Is that true? Uh, uh, you know what I, mean? I, think, I think that's uh, <laughs> confidential information. Uh, <laughs> Kane and his memes, man. He's always sending me memes. Like, <laughs> yeah. And uh, another thing that uh, I love is that. I know that you go to a regular like meetup group with other people that you work with, right? And that even though you're you're working from home, you're still finding opportunities to meet with people outside of work, right? And I think that's important because it shows that there's a closeness that you have, or at least you're you're looking to build it because who says that, hey, I want to spend time with my coworkers even outside of work hours, right? Mm -hmm. That must mean they're at least cool people where you'll voluntarily spend your time with them, right? Yeah. Like what was what was it that um, how did you get into that networking event uh, with, with coworkers? Um, well, at least at, uh, for Sony, like we have like uh, the art in the park that you go to sometimes. And I do. Uh, they're just things that are announced that I just happen to find people talking about, and I I just go to them. Um, I don't really know what to expect, but uh, I try to like put aside my like uh, introvertedness and try to just meet people. Um, same thing with the IGDA meetings. At first, I was like really uh, afraid of going there and kind of just trying to meet people and talk to people. Uh, but I like game development too much. It, so uh, my love for game development kind of overrides my <laughs> introvertedness, I guess. Uh, and like, I can, I can totally relate um, how I use game development in general and love for video games to push myself out of my comfort zone. Um, for me, the, the, the example is doing things like public speaking, because I'm not sure if you guys know this, but every time I went to San Diego State to do a talk, I was absolutely terrified really? because standing in front of a bunch of strangers and like talking about my experience, it, it just makes me like it would make me so nervous. Like I would feel like, why would these people want to listen to me? Like what? Like all of the weird things that go on in my head. But I love how you gave that example of your love for game development helped push you um, to to kind of stretch yourself in ways that you may not have done in, in any other uh, situation. Um, so how has game development also helped you kind of break through some things that uh, like some limiting beliefs, if you, you know what I mean? Good question. I mean, honestly, like, I wouldn't have, like, actually, I don't think I'd have any of my friends that I do right now if it wasn't for game <laughs> development. Um, it, it has, it's been, like, a huge, like, way to connect with people. And I'm so glad that uh, I've met all these cool people like you guys <laughs> through game <laughs> development. Uh, as for specific beliefs, can't think of any off the top of my head. Do you have any examples? Oh, Jesus. Um, ways that, like, one of the things that I mentioned, uh, being able to speak in public. Um, another thing was just having confidence in myself through games in general. Like, um, one of the things where I really learned power in myself um, was when I was a kid, I, I had a brother that was older than me, four years older than me. And uh, we used to play Street Fighter 2 on the Super Nintendo, right? And my entire life up to that point, my brother had beat my ass in pretty much everything. So any sport, any game that we played, sometimes he beat my ass literally. Um, but he was always like the, the, the boss, right? Mm -hmm. So when I was playing Street Fighter, I just loved that game so much. I played it over and over and over. And I got, I got so good to the point where 
I was able to beat my brother 10 out of 10 games. And that blew my mind because I was like, oh my goodness, this, this person that has tormented me in so many ways, I'm actually able to beat him now. And a lot of that was, I, I realized my own work, my own work ethic, and that if I work harder, then I could, I could, I guess, defeat this foe or defeat a, um, a problem that before I thought was completely insurmountable. You know what I mean? So that was, that was so empowering for me. It was like, okay, if, if I dedicate myself enough to something, then I can beat, you know, people that are way older than I was. So, um, I think that gave me a lesson that that's continuing to play out today. That's actually a really good example. And I just realized I have like a similar story of, I think I was in middle school. This was around when I was like uh, trying to make games with like the more click and drag kind of kids game type of game makers. But my dad suggested to me, I learned programming because he knew I was interested in making games and he knew that was like a big part about game development. So I actually remember trying to learn programming when I was like in middle school and it, it just totally baffled my mind and I couldn't get my head around it. And it frustrated me so much I remember specifically thinking, I'm never going to be a programmer. I don't know what job I'm going to get, but it's not programming. Uh, but uh, here I am as a programmer. And that, that actually happened a couple of times where I, I kind of tried programming and I kind of quit it. But then I, I, something about it uh, piqued my interest again and I tried it again. It was still too hard. I, I gave up on it, uh, gave up. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. So I stopped trying it for a while. And I think it was like the third time where I really tried to like learn programming, where it, it somehow finally started to click. Um, and that, that's, that's that. <laughs> dude, honestly, same. That's a pretty similar experience to myself, dude. Like, because, <clears throat> you know, I've implemented a lot of the music and audio stuff myself when we worked on our games, right? Um, I remember like taking one CS class, CS 107 at, at state, and I was like, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> then I'm like, you know what? Let me try this again. And I just kind of stopped for six months. But then like we really needed the support in the club because I like I think the entire time I was there, I was probably the only audio person. <laughs> there wasn't that many at the time yeah so I, I remember like one time something just clicked and it was like really cool that you and the other programmers let me like go into the code and risk breaking things so I could actually <laughs> implement everything <laughs> I love that story because I'm kind of the opposite right like I studied in high school I got into programming AP computer science and I, I started learning programming with QBasic and uh, C++ mm. and getting into that class, like it, it melted my mind and I thought I was going to be a good programmer, but that moment said like, mm -hmm, that's, that's definitely not for me. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the cool thing is like my love for video games, I thought programming might be a step into it. And I actually made like a very rudimentary choose your own adventure game. Mm -hmm. But at that point I decided like, you know what? I don't think programming is one of my strengths. Yeah. And that helped influence me to know that I love video games, but programming might not be it. So that's when I started to adjust to different, um, a different career path. And that's when I ended up finding um, years later, a role as a tester. And then that started to really click. I was like, oh my goodness. Okay, this, this is feeling more natural. And then I started getting more into like the love of the business aspect of making games. So using my love for games to drive me forward. And even though I hit that roadblock that is computer science, I found a way around it uh, into business. And then which leads me to where I am right now and helping people understand that you may have an idea of how your career path is going to play out. But part of it is just growing up and finding what are the things that you really love to do and are really good at mm -hmm. and finding ways to leverage that into games. So, yeah, that's that's awesome. I love your examples of like, especially that you came across something, you hit the wall, but then you're like, there's something that's continuing to draw me to do it again. And you said twice, three times. Um, and I think that persistence is awesome. So thank you. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's really cool that like we've all like hit the same wall, but we all love games so much that we still end up in the industry. It's really cool. 
Yeah, that's awesome, man. Like, I was actually just going through, I, I found the itch page for your, for the games, and I realized there's four games we've worked on together. On your wow, page, nice. Dude. That's, it's, it's like, that's just kind of what it takes, right? Like, and, and the question I wanted to ask you is, um, were there any highlights in your interview, like, with the, with the people you interviewed with? Like, anything that, like, do you think helped you stand out the most in terms of uh, getting in, specifically for AAA? Um, mm -hmm. so that's like a kind of a different beast, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think what really helped me out is that, uh, at least as a technical artist, I heard from Barry that, um, they use a thing called PyQt, which is kind of like a, a Python package that's used for Maya, which is a 3d modeling program. And they use that to make tools. Uh, that's something I never heard about, and uh, I already knew some Python, so I thought I might as well try to learn this. Mm. And I spent a lot of time trying to learn that, and I learned more and more that that's like a tool that's actually used all around the industry mm -hmm. uh, in tech art, and that's something I never would have known just from like taking programming classes. Um, but that's that was clearly like a really uh, like a, that's something that ended up like on my resume and. Uh, I think that really helped me get in. So knowing like specific tools that are used in the industry, um, I think that helped me out a lot. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. Um, and I know Kane won't talk about it, but I've known Kane for a long time. And I'm willing to bet that some of the other stuff that probably helped him out getting in was like, he was also, real, you're president of the VR club as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he was also in the VR club. And I know with that one specifically, uh, they had a couple projects that I think like shipped and they actually presented at different conferences that you actually went and talked at. I, right. I'm willing to bet that that kind of thing also probably went a long way because I think you listed mm -hmm. all that stuff on your resume, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, like as a self-proclaimed introvert, like you were also the president of a club. What possessed you <laughs> to Too be close. the president? <laughs> Good question. Right? Um, <laughs> I think a part of it is that I used to be in Boy Scouts, um, where you kind of just learn a lot about leadership and getting into uh, leading groups and stuff. So I, I, I wasn't comfortable with it, but I, I was at least familiar with being a leader and, um, at least for, uh, the game club, I remember, uh, the, the club was kind of hitting like a point where um, uh, things weren't kind of happening. We were kind of just sitting around and kind of just talking during the clubs. And uh, I wanted to make games. I remember that. Uh, so I actually, like, just, you know, there was like a time during the club where everybody was just kind of chilling around talking. And I said, hey, you guys want to make a game? And everybody's like, yeah. <laughs> so. I was surprised by that response, by the way, because I thought they weren't making games because nobody felt like it. But it turns out, like, everybody in the club wanted to make games, and uh, they just needed kind of, like, someone to say, let's do it. Um, and, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, once again, it's my, it's my passion for game development that helped me uh, become a leader, because... I didn't want to become a leader. I wanted to make games, but uh, mm -hmm. I needed to become a leader to be make games. Um, yeah, and that kind of just led to me becoming the president because yeah. that kind of making the games became like a focus of the club. I remember and, that. Yeah, yeah. I remember you. I remember like a flip switch, like a like a switch flipped. Sorry, um, because I remember we were talking about that. We were both kind of frustrated with the direction. And then, like, after that point, I'm like, damn, I'm glad he's, he really stepped up and he's he's leading a direction. And, uh, God, for, like, I didn't want to do it. So I'm like, I'm glad Kane did, you know? So I, I just, I was, that was really cool to see. So I, I kind of want to double click on that because I, I know you mentioned you had experience in the Boy Scouts and that you mentioned, like, you learned about leadership there. And like, what are some things that you learned about leadership? Because that's such a nebulous like term, right? But what does leadership mean to you? Good question. Um, 
Yeah, so in Boy Scouts, like, we would go on, like, camping trips and stuff, and we'd have, like, patrols. So, like, our whole troop would have, like, small groups, and each patrol would have leaders. And that's kind of, like, it's just a normal thing where as you grow up, as you get, as you become the older Scouts, you take more leadership positions. Um, and you, you would, like, have to, like, plan things out and kind of delegate and learn how to... Uh, ask people to do things while trying to be fair and uh, keep people under control. We have a lot of young kids in the troop. Um, but what does it mean to be a leader? Um, <laughs> good question. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think gaining the experience to just talk in front of a group of people and ask things from them, ask, ask them to do things, and uh, being comfortable with asking for um, the word. Like, Tough question, huh? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but, yeah, I think, like, just, just the experience of standing in front of a group of people and asking them to do things and uh, communicating uh was a big part of at least what helped me become comfortable enough to try leading and um yeah <laughs> I, I don't know if i have a specific answer for that question but. Um, it's okay that's okay um and i kind of want to ask byron mm -hmm. because you were a part of this club which kane was a the, the president right mm -hmm. and it sounded like you you're interested in following Byron, or you're interested in following Kane even before he had the title of president. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Like, what was it about Kane that made you want to say, "Hey, I trust this dude," and yeah, let's let's do this, let's make games together, right? What was your experience? Well, like I mentioned <clears throat> earlier in the podcast, right? Uh, Kane and I have worked on four or five game jams together, so I've kind of seen his work ethic. I know he's going to get something done when he says he's going to get it done. And um, <clears throat> I could tell that he really wanted the club to succeed. We both did. Unfortunately, at the time, I was busy working like a part-time job. So becoming president for me was not really something I was considering. So I was really happy to see Kane do it because I knew he was dedicated to the club. He'd never missed a meeting. And when I say never missed a meeting, that's really important because there was a time, uh, a period of time in the club where our, our attendance was very 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 inconsistent you probably see the same five or six people um over time right so king was one of those those leaders that i constantly saw in there putting in the work um so i think between that and the games that we've worked on in the past that was probably really what made me realize that he would be a great uh person to lead the lead the club awesome and one of the things that i love about that example is um the distinction that leadership isn't just a title, right? You weren't following him because he had president, uh, you know, before his name. It's because you knew his character and he who, who he is as a person. Um, and I think that's something that we all innately know is we know who leaders are because we know people that we're around all the time and they may not have the title, but there are people that you trust and you're like, dude, I, I, I believe in that person. I don't know exactly what it is, but something about how they carry themselves, how they communicate um, and who they are as a person that makes me comfortable being with them and following them. Um, so that's one of those things where like the just the examples that both of you set is is huge um, and understanding how your actions are being they're being subconsciously read by everyone around you, right? So just knowing these things about yourself can have a tremendous impact on others. Um, and that's why I love having Kane and Byron here together, because as natural leaders, even if you may not understand it, or you may not see yourself with that title, I know that you're leaders. And that's why I think it's great to have you here to be the example for others that are listening in to kind of, you know, to learn from your example. So, good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Man. So, Kane, I'm curious what with your career and you being in the industry in AAA, 
um, and having experienced this for, you said, a few months, what are the things in the future that you're looking towards uh, and that you're building towards? Um, Indie studio. You know, I'm <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, I still like just trying all kinds of things in game development, which is kind of a hard thing to do when you're in a AAA where you, everybody kind of has more specific roles. Um, so I've been trying to try as many things as I can. Um, that's actually how I ended up working on the shaders that I was talking about. Um, that's kind of just something that, uh, actually, it's a task I got from Barry. Um, I, we were kind of having like a lull with work where we didn't have much work to do at the moment. So I was just trying to find work and uh, I decided to kind of go outside of what our uh, group does to try to find work. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to, I, I'm also interested in game design, which is like a very different thing from like the stuff what I'm, is that what I'm doing? But uh, that's why I'm going to try to uh, meet people that are in, doing game design and uh, I just want to meet everybody <laughs> in the industry. Um, or in the company because I'm interested in like every part of the company. Um, and yeah, even though I wanted to get into tech art, I'm still open to like exploring like new types of jobs you could have in the industry. So I want to like, I, I'm trying to like keep as many doors open as I can, I guess, or find as many doors. Um, yeah. I don't know where I'm going to go from here yet, but uh, I'm working to, have as many choices as I can, I guess. So are there any personal projects you're working on now? Like, I know it can be a little bit tough to mm -hmm. have the energy to do that after working in the industry, uh, you know, 40 hours a week. But like, is there anything that you're excited about that you're working on personally? Yeah, um, there's no project that I've started yet, but I've, I've been brainstorming a lot of things. I've only worked on a lot of like smaller scale projects on my own. Um, Kind of just little prototypes and stuff so i think it'd be cool if i could like have a a medium scale game uh maybe like an hour or two of gameplay mm. something that i could like spend like a year or two working on i think that'd be really cool in that case um, i just picked up the yeah. quest 2 kane let's go <laughs> make a <laughs> vr game yeah yeah dude i'm trying to learn more vr development dude <clears throat> yeah vr development's cool it's pretty similar to actual traditional 3d so I yeah. think you'll get a hang of it pretty easily. Yeah, it's just have, having the energy to, you know. <laughs> One of the things that I love that you guys are talking about is independent projects, because I know that having that drive to do something on your own um, can be the difference between, it, you know, it, it really maximizes your growth when you're taking your own personal time to work on these projects. And I know Kane, there was one time that you shared with me, um, I can't even remember like what it was, but you had some, was it like AR, like a piano where there was a, a oh, camera yeah. and then you, it, it, you could, it would play MIDI. So I don't even know how to describe it, <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Can you please tell us more about that project? And share uh, it if you yeah. can too, please share uh, it, like share screen. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't have that set up. <laughs> it was a pretty janky setup. Basically, I had like a tripod hooked up to like a small projector I have. Yeah. And I pointed that projector down at my uh, keyboard piano. And I made a program in Unity that takes MIDI files and displays the keys to press. So you could actually see the keys on your keyboard light up. Uh, because I'm too lazy to learn how to play piano. <laughs> uh, yeah, that helped me learn about shaders um, and just general programming too and working with actual hardware that's not a traditional screen. Yeah, that was a really fun project. Yeah, that was when he said, I'll take your music degree. <laughs> <laughs> and, and out of all things in the world that you could have created, what, I mean, you mentioned wanting to learn piano. So what was the thought process for you creating that? Um, I think I actually saw like a similar project, uh, online 
but uh, it wasn't something that was like publicly available. Uh, it was it was a pretty different uh, thing, but it was similar enough to inspire the inspiration. Um, it was kind of just a mix of my two interests. Uh, I was I got the keyboard pretty recently, and uh, I was learning songs on my own, but. Uh, sheet music is something that I've been struggling to learn. <laughs> uh, so I've been using this program called Synthesia. Um, so on your computer monitor, it displays what keys to press. And I was always kept looking back and forth between the monitor and the keyboard, and it was getting kind of frustrating. Um, so I thought I'd like make that similar thing I saw online while learning. Uh, you know, it, it's a it's not really a game. I mean, it's kind of a game, but it still used my interests in game development with my interest in music. Just combine them. That sounds so awesome in that, like, it's the mechanics, and it would just be a matter of adding a few elements here and there to actually make it a game. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that might be something we have to revisit in a, in, in a future episode. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to see the evolution of that project. <laughs> Yeah, dude. I love how you just like, I, I've always loved seeing your projects, dude, because I'm not going to lie. There's times where I'll just be like, you know what? I'm not working on any, anything today. Then you'll send me some like amazing thing on Unity. And I'm like, you know what? I guess I'm going to be working in Unity all day. Because <laughs> <laughs> right, I love how you, uh, you don't know everything going in, right? But you understand yeah. that you have a foundation. So you'll learn the rest of the skills as you need them. And I think that's like super important because I know for a lot of uh, beginners, they'll just say, oh, what skills should I learn? Whereas they should be trying to do something so they can actually ask more targeted, targeted questions, uh, mm -hmm. more specifically what they learn. Because like, what should I be learning is an incredibly vague question that has so many different answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. I, yeah, I, I usually don't just... Uh, like open up a book and try to just learn everything about programming. Like the only reason I started learning programming is because of the goal that I wanted to make games, mm -hmm. uh, not because I want to learn specifically just programming. And every every like Unity feature I've learned, every every uh, every skill I've learned has been based off of yeah, like based off of a goal instead of just kind of learning some random thing. Right. And I don't know if you'd agree with this, but it seems to me like the more projects you work on, the more advanced they get and the more like it introduces you to different parts of the system of like unity and programming. So you naturally gain more experience in that way. Like, I don't know if that's something you agree with, but that's just been my experience for sure. Yeah, that, yeah, that definitely. It, it You definitely start seeing how like different things that you never thought were related starts connecting. Um, yeah. Uh, even like cross disciplinary, like there's sometimes where I notice like things I learned in art come over to programming and the other way around or everything. The more you learn, the more you realize everything's really connected and it, it helps a lot to uh, yeah. push you to learn new things. For sure. I've actually felt that way with music. I think learning programming mm -hmm. helped me compose music better. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I want to I want to revisit something that Byron you just said recently um, that Kane would create something and then you would see it and it would inspire you to want to work harder. And I think I love that about your friendship in particular is that you two are constantly encouraging each other to do better because I know that there are other friendships out there where it's kind of the reverse, where if one person starts to excel, the other person tries to bring them down. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very important dynamic with, you know, who do you choose to be friends with, right? Are you choosing to be friends with people that are encouraging you and empowering you in your career? Or are you, are you surrounding yourself with people that are, um, that can be kind of like the, the background haters, you know what I mean? They'll, they'll try to drag you down um, if you try to exceed past of what they have programmed in their mind as you are, if that makes sense. Oh. Like sometimes you have a vision of a, who a person is, and if they start to exceed that, they're like, it makes them uncomfortable. They're like, they want to bring you back down to where they remember you. 
So I love that you two, and not only you two, but I know like your circle of friends in general, you're always constantly helping each other out, especially in careers. I mean, you, you mentioned Barry, who was helping you, helping encourage you to what to learn, you know, how to, um, how to navigate the waters of getting the job, how to interview and things like that. Um, so to the listeners out there, make sure that you're surrounding yourself with people that are actively encouraging you and empowering you in your career. Um, because that's a huge, like the people that surround you, um, there's a saying that goes, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with, right? Um, so you might have to take a step back and take an audit of like, who are the people that are around you and how can they be impacting your career and your growth as a person? So I thank you guys for sharing that, that example. <laughs> yeah. yeah thank you. I, yeah. I just wanted to add like, yeah, I definitely... Byron has definitely uh, inspired me to work on my own projects. It's not just, it's just not, it's not just a one way thing. Like he's been working on like some really cool technical stuff that I didn't even realize you could like combine programming and music. Um, but yeah, he showed me about that kind of stuff and that, that made me want to learn about more stuff about how to program with music. Yeah. It's a lot of fun for sure. Um, so and I, one one more one question about gaming, the game development and gaming in general is now that you're experienced game developers, how does it how does that affect how you play games? <laughs> oh, uh, for me, it could be like pretty hard to turn off the the game developer side of my brain, where I'm always trying to learn. Um, yeah, because now. Whenever I play a game, I'm always thinking about like the level design and how they're doing things. I'm always trying to look behind the scenes, uh, which isn't the best for like experiencing the game as it's uh, intended to be. Um, yeah. How about you, Byron? Uh, it's definitely given me a greater appreciation. Um, I guess, like you said, it's hard to turn it off. I was, uh, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but like. There's certain things I used to be like, man, this is so cool. How could they do this? And now I'm just like, oh, yeah, they probably did this, this, and this. Or some variation of that, you know, like it, it, kind of at a certain level, it's it's variation of like a foundational like skill set pretty much. Um, and it's pretty funny. I was talking to a friend the other day because I was complaining about uh, something specific in like there was a Sonic Colors uh, remake. Um, or it wasn't a complaining, but it was an observation I made. And I'm like, man, I'm not even a, a professional, but like, in my opinion, they should just do this, this, and this. And he's just like, Byron, you are a professional. And I was just like, what? <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> he's just like, what do you, he's like, he, he, the way he put it too, was like really funny. Like, I guess technically I, I am, but yeah that's it's, it's it's an interesting experience for sure it's just for me ultimately it's given me a greater appreciation of the games that i play yeah for me in particular i love just you mentioned appreciation and i love just seeing how how much time and effort it takes to make something of world-class quality you know what i mean because before i used to just be a consumer and i'd look at something oh that looks like crap oh this doesn't sound good but now that i'm behind the scenes and i'm seeing how people pour their time and their soul and their blood sweat and tears into these games it gives me so much more appreciation where like i see a, like i enjoy looking at the credits yeah. at the end of a game or end of a movie because i see holy shit like there are literally hundreds or maybe even thousands of people that contributed to this game that i've invested hours in so like something that that kind of sounds weird is like there are times where i would just like research a studio and i would connect with a bunch of people on linkedin and just literally type up a message on hey i saw that you worked on this game I absolutely loved it. Thank you so much for your contributions. Um, and it's crazy because like, that's a way that we can say thanks to people that have made these creations, like the movies that we watch or the games that we play. And just like that little bit of appreciation. And I'm sure you guys feel that now when somebody plays your game or plays something that you worked on and they show genuine appreciation, you know how that feels. And then now you have the power to give that 
that same type of feeling to other developers out there. Yeah. Um, so just like that's such a cool experience, just being behind the scenes and seeing everybody work together um, and then having that gratitude. It just feels so good. So, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for making awesome games for me to play on the back end. And for because I think I've, I've also worked in game jams with both of you. So to to see how you work, to see the stuff that you're doing. Um, yeah. Amazing, amazing stuff. Yeah. And I also wanted to add on to what you just said. Uh, for me personally, um, working on these kinds of things like hasn't necessarily changed the way I play games, but I will say that like, as a, a the industry is pretty big now, right? So when we talk about the gaming industry, it's also YouTubers, it's also Twitch streamers. So um, a big thing is like, I'll see people share their opinions on the industry. Oh, I would do this. I would do this. I would do this. It really helps me take a step back and think about it from a different point of view. Because it's so easy to have to not have a stake in this and to just say that I would do it, I would do it this way. So that for me is that's where I've seen the biggest change. I'll sometimes cringe a little bit when I hear the opinions that are put out just because they they come from a good place, but they're incredibly uninformed. <laughs> so, Mr. Kane, with all of that being said, very important question is what are you playing now? I, I'm actually not in the middle of playing something, but I was oh. just about to start Dead Space. Um, I bought it recently, and I've been wanting to play it. Of course, right after I buy it, I realize there's a, a remake coming out, but <laughs> I think it'll be cool to check the first one out first. Yeah, I'm really into like uh, really atmospheric games. So that, that looks like just the game for me. Yeah. All right. Well, we are actually nearing the end of the podcast. Um, I know, Kane, we only I, you agreed to have to be on for the hour. So I don't want to take up any more of your time. But um, are there any like parting words you like to give to people um, that are probably our age, maybe a little bit younger, trying to get into the industry? Um, and uh, also, Tell people where they can find you online, like social media, LinkedIn, stuff like that. Uh, I don't have much of a social media presence, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, as for uh, a parting message, uh, I'd say just keep learning. If you're passionate about it, uh, you're probably already spending your own time learning about things. So just keep going. Um, if you're one of those people that think, oh, it'd be cool to be in the industry, but uh, haven't started kind of... Uh, working towards it uh it's always a great time to start cool and uh where can they find you i know you at least have linkedin right linkedin and uh Instagram. yeah king shepherd on linkedin all right cool thanks kane and right, thanks uh, for having me yeah we'll see you guys on the next episode <laughs>